Hi everyone. Um, first, I want to thank the organizers for the invitation, but also for the great job that they're doing in the workshop. Um, I will try to be very short. Um, I guess everyone knows what is Genome Wire Association Studios, but just to remind, is trying to look for correlation between phenotypes and, and genotypes, uh, and especially for very complex traits. And this can be disease, this can be behavior, or even environmental um, response to stimulus, and that's important for us. Um, these tools are not just for medical science or, or ag agriculture. Um, they, are, they can be very important for biologists because, because they are very important tools to, to, to disentangle biological mechanisms that affect the phenotype. And ultimately, what, what they can provide is actually allow us to predict based on genotypes what phenotypes will we get. And imagine what, what is the potential for that, not just for managing natural resources, but also for conservation. <clears throat> For, for a very good uh, study of, of GWAS, um, in my opinion, and in, in many papers, the, the, the best thing you have to do is actually get a very design of sampling. Um, some people say that you need thousands of samples, and these people are obviously the people working with humans, but most of us will not collect that many samples. Uh, what I think is actually find a balance with all your different um, groups, right? And, the most important thing in the sampling is that you design enough um, sequencing to get enough um, markers. And again, for humans, they say that you need millions of the SNPs. I will try to demonstrate today that that's not true, but um, if that's my opinion. The other thing you have to consider with your sample, obviously, uh, is um, population structure, because that will affect your signal. Uh, relatedness of inbreeding, because that will affect your signal sex bias and age bias. But again, you can avoid this when you sample, because you know that the population exists, you will pop sampling in one population. You, you know that the species tend to have high relatedness, you will try to avoid that. Uh, and if you know that the difference in sex, you will sample equally both sex. And if you know that they have bias in, in, in ages, you will try to, to, to sample as many ages as you want. Or in the, in the case that you don't have enough money, you will sample jo just one age or a stage of life. So today I will present one of uh, work that we did um, with Australian Adapter, first because it's an important commercial species, but also because our co collaborator in New Zealand have already a genomic sample that is very good quality, uh, chromosomal level, and also because she was doing experiments uh, separating a small and big fish already during, during several years. Uh, so she select fish uh, in the 5% tails of, of both distribution when she was growing the fish. And at, at the end of the three years of growing, uh, we collect this fish. Um, there were 300 fish for each size, but after filtering and, and trick cleaning, we finished with 180 small and 183 large fish. And again, with all the filters that everyone mentioned, so all quality that you can imagine, we, we finished with 70,000, around 70,000 SNPs. <clears throat> Maybe the only important thing that you have to consider with filter for GWAS is two things, uh, different than the population structure. Uh, the math, so minimal alert frequency. You, you want a, a, a minimal alert frequency that is not too low. You want to lose loss that have very lo low representation because that can bias a lot you, you signal. Um, so 0 0.5, 0 0.3% is, is, is good. Um, the other thing is, depend what analysis you would use, uh, uh, and I will talk about at the end, um, you want to filter for linkage or you don't want to filter for linkage. <coughs> Sorry, yeah, the, the, ex, the, 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 the babies were collected in the sea, all from one population, and they were put in pans, and then every, every year they were, they were checking the size and then separated in, in pants to keep the same density. And, and then the three years, they collect all the fish and then kill many, many of them. <laughs> um, and yeah, separate the biggest and the smallest of them. All, all have the same age, all are the same population. Okay, I'll disclaim here. Uh, I am an expert on these uh, methods. Uh, I have used them and I like them. Um, 
And also, you will notice that my R is as bad as my English, so my syntax and grammar is pretty bad. Uh, so, sorry. Um, but also, most of the, most of the um, commands are based on these two sites that I recommend you, you visit. Okay, what is random forest? Where basically it's a um, supervised learning machine that consists of a lot of trees, like a forest, uh, but what type of trees? Well, they are classified or regression classification um, trees. And basically what you have is a lot of samples here, and then randomly you select some characteristics that you already decide what are there, and then based on these characteristics you, s you start to separate them. And you repeat this several times, and then based on the consensus, you have a decision. Is your sample big or is your sample small? In this case, it's small. <clears throat> this, this, this tool is very powerful and very versatile. So you can use it for GAA, you can use it for GWAS, uh, and in fact, when you use it for GAA, these days they are been using a lot for genetic offset and vulnerability. Uh, something that I mentioned because Rene asked me, uh, <clears throat> and it's true, uh, for GEA, and this is uh, a software that is much better, is um, um, random gradient, grad, gradient forest that actually is based on random forest with a little bit of difference in the way that works. But if you want to do GEA, I, I recommend gradient forest. What are the benefits of use random forest? Well, um, have l relative low risk of overfitting. So you can put millions of SNPs and it still will work okay. Uh, it's be, as I mentioned, it's very um, flexible for things. You can put different data sets, you can use it with different hypotheses. Uh, and it's relatively easy to, to, to discern near the, the important genes or environmental variables. Um, more internal in, in, in the model, what, the, what does is actually a bagging, that is a bootstrapping aggregation. Basically, you, you're doing parallel bootstrappings uh, and that depends on the number of, number of trees that you want to do. And you select a group of samples, normally 70 to 80 percent of your samples will be the training, and you put it there, and then the, in, in the bootstrapping, you select some of them and put it in different bags. After you run all the trees, you classify it based on, on, again, the consensus, and at the end, you put all together and you have a decision. Um, there are two main components of the algorithm. Um, one is the, f the selection of fe fe features that in our case will be s SNPs or characteristics. Sorry, I cannot pronounce the word. Um, and, and the tree structure. And these two things are controlled with hypervariables. Um, the model has several hypervariables, but in my opinion, and in most people that use it, the, the two main importance are the number of trees that you will use and the number of features that you will try, and the number of features that you will try in each decision. Um, as you can imagine, uh, more, more trees, you have a happy tree, very accurate, high performance. But also you put that, you will use a lot of uh, computer source and then you can crash or never finish the model. So as a rule of thumb, uh, the number of trees work very well between 100 and 500. In, fi in fact, the default in, in, in random forest is 500. Uh, and the number of decisions are, if you are doing regression, is the total number of SNPs that you have divided by three. If, if you're doing a classification, is the square of the total number of SNPs you have. However, I think the number of trees in here work very well. I have not seen anything that passed 600 trees. Uh, but the number of decisions is very variable, and I will demonstrate as well with example. So, because of the problems with internet, we will not run it. Um, oh, actually, we will not run it even in, in here. <laughs> Sorry, here we go. So, I was just going to show the type of, of uh, input file. It's basically a structure file with your trait or phenotype in the first column instead of the population. Um, and then the genotypes classify as homozygote, heterozygote, or, or the homozygote dominant, uh, or not dominant, but major. Um, 
And it doesn't matter, you can use one zero, uh, one, zero, one, two, or minus one, zero, one, but always the, the two homozygous have to have two units of differentiation. That's important. Uh, I want you to, to notice that I mentioned 70 dozen SNPs, but I am using for this exercise just two dozen because running 70 dozen will be very slow. And the 300 samples are well divided, as I mentioned before, 180 uh, small fish, 183 big fish. Now for running the model, you have to turn, but I was trying to show here that if you're running with a very, very small um, um, forest, so just 50 trees and um, <clears throat> 10 SNPs try every time that have a division, you get an accuracy uh, very close to 73, 74. However, you run in a few times like that, you, you will have fun, a little bit of variation every time. So what you have to do is actually run um, a few times. In fact, the, 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 the room Tom again is 10 times, but I was running just five to see this. And you can see that they actually, in average, the accuracy was 74. Now you have um, three different measures of accuracy. The accuracy, 74, that is based on the, the errors in the decisions, just basically that. But kappa, that is how clean each SNP will um, divide the groups in every decision step. Now, this is very important when you have different size uh, of samples between the two groups, but because we have similar size, we don't consider that. And, and it's actually a measure of how um, better is your model compared compare with um, just random model. But again, it's, it's not important when you have very good balance of sample. Uh, then, then, then we try with the defaults of the model, and you get an improvement of 0.6%. So if you run a very small uh, forest, you actually get similar results that if you run the default, right? Um, you say, wow, what is the point to run that many? You can run it for 10 minutes instead of 10 hours, so no point. Well, let's try actually uh, um, proper turning. Um, and again, this will be take ages, so we didn't run it. But just, if you see in this um, results, um, you got for 200, uh, sorry, 200 different um, characteristics to use in the decisions, uh, to 2,000, that is very close to the, all the SNPs that we had. And the improvement go 3% instead of the previous model uh, to 3.4. And in fact, you see here, you have a peak of accuracy. So you don't need to go up even a thousand, that yeah, you get 0.2% of improvement. So that shows you that, okay, my best M3 in terms of time and accuracy will be around 600. But then you can also decide uh, how many trees you want to run at that, uh, around that value. And yeah, you can do this. Again, number of values, um, values that you want to, to test, number of trees that you want to test, and then you run that. You can do that in parallel, or, although this is not in parallel, but you can put in parallel so you will save a lot of time. And then the results are here. What, sorry. What you want to see is like, actually 200 is a little bit better in, in average than the others. What you're getting with more and more trees is just more stability. So you have less standard deviations as you get more and more and more trees you try. The problem with that is that what you're doing actually is using, um, uh, because you don't have many options, you, are using, you start to using the same individuals or the same characteristics, even, even though it's randomly. So the trees start to be correlated and that will start to reduce that, that variation. Um, I mean, it's still 500 is, is, is okay, but when you start to do thousands, you start to get that correlation. But again, you don't need to do 500, you don't need to do 300. 200 will give you pretty much the same answer. So you will run the, the model with the best um, setups. The accuracy increased to 78%. And well, 3.5% accuracy is not much, right? But I, I want to point it out that these two dozen SNPs that I select were extracted for the four chromosomes that actually we know are, are um, important for growth. Uh, and because of that, obviously you expect that with models that are not very well done, will, you will still have similar answer. 
My point is, if you are running your, all your data, you will not have that. The, 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 small, the, small, tree, the small model will not show you the same results. You, you will get better increment of accuracy. Okay. The cool thing with that is also that um, because um, you have measure of how the SNPs are helping the model to decide if your individual is small or is big, you can determine what are actually the most important SNPs. And in this case, you can see very clear that two, four, and six, seven maybe uh, are the ones that are driven that. And the other really cool thing of, of Rainbow R is that actually you can control for, for several cofactors at the same time, like population structure, relatedness, uh, um, sex difference, age difference, uh, and so on. Okay. Go back to this. The input file. So for, 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 for Rainbow R, you need three input files. So the phenotype, the genotype, as similar format as the um, uh, random forest, but also you need a map. So you need the position of is this nib in each chromosome, and you can get that from playing. Um, we're, we were going to run a single SNP analysis and see how that works and then see the most important loci. And again, we go back to chromosome 16. Uh, actually, uh, let me see if I come back here. Okay. I was going to show you the results from, from UWAS, and basically you have two important things to see when you do the UWAS. The QQ um, plot, that is a correlation of your p-values. So if they are, you expect a, a linear correlation, uh, if you start to have things in the bottom or in the top that are weird, you don't, you don't trust that run. But uh, if you have just in the top top, that, that are your liars. So that's a good run. The other thing that I was going to show you, but I cannot run it, um, is the Manhattan plot. And the Manhattan plot will show you where your SNPs are. And I was going to show you that, that again, chromosome 16 is very important. And then with these results, you can calculate how much you can predict based on these genotypes. Um, for that, you want to estimate the variation explaining with genotypes, the estimate residual variance, and then the um, heritability. So the heritability of these genotypes are, is very low, 60%. Uh, sorry, does it? Yeah, the heritability. And then run just a prediction model and see how the predict value of your individuals are correlated with the observed value. And as you can see, it's not very good. Um, in fact, it's actually less powerful than random forest with just 2,000 SNPs. So even the software is good, um, it's not getting as good results as random forest first, but um, I want to point it out that um, complex tra traits that are polygenetic are not easy to detect. So what you have to do or what we have to do with this was actually use haplotype based analysis that actually give you better results, close to 80% uh, accuracy in the predictions. Um, the other thing probably for the future is trying to look uh, how structural variants behave in this that is probably more information then. And I think that's it. Can I ask you, sorry, a clarification? I haven't quite understood what the difference is in, in I understand there are different analyses, but I haven't understood very well, much the difference between random forest and the rainbow R. And is it only for rainbow R that you need a map, uh, like position of your SNP? So you, re, you need a reference genome, I guess? Yes. Um, and, but not for G. Wow. No, no, for random forest, you don't need that. Uh, for um, a random forest. A random forest, you don't need that. The difference is the, the statistical approach, right? Like, a, a random forest, again, is like a bagging and classification trees, when this is more like a correlation model, like just look like uh, general linear models to see how um, your SNP is correlated with your phenotype. If that makes sense. More 
similar than to the RDA? Sorry, I'm talking <laughs> Yeah, <so> yeah, <laughs> in, in that respect, yeah, but the RDA, you, you are looking correlation between environmental and, yeah. and genetics. This is more like a, a, a different groups. Like you can do ecotypes, but still it's not gradient. If That's that makes right. sense. And, and also like, uh, it's only with rainbow R that you can then, is it correct? Correct me if I understood wrong, but you can uh, form haplotypes with linked, physically linked No, snakes? no, no. Yeah. You can do, <laughs> Plink can do it, but in um, a slight window way. So you select, I don't know, 40 SNPs that are together and all four SNPs. The, the good thing of this is if you know the, the genes, uh, you can say I have these 300 these genes, these 20 in these genes. It doesn't have to have the same number of the same distance in, 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 in the chromosome, if that makes sense. You, you, it's more flexible um, run, run, rainbow R because you can decide what are the groups or the blocks. Plain, you have measures, like it's just mathematical measures. You, you cannot put the information that you have a priori if you have the information a priori. Okay, so for plink is like they need to be physically close, right? Yes, well, and, in this and, case cert and, and, and certain linkage by or, or correlation value already. Yeah. Okay, but with this one you can just you can decide make what, your own which decision. ones you want. Okay. I, I mean, you have to do it based on some information like yeah, yeah, mapping map or um, yeah. annotation or something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Thank you. <laughs>